hi guys uh, good evening and welcome back so today we will try to review one of the uh, like you know company interview questions so like uh, let's get into the questions guys so let us uh, get into the questions so let us try to solve them so like you know it is basically we pro interview questions so which is an experience of uh, three to five years of experience so basically uh, it is for an automation uh, role and uh, the very first question was like uh, tell about yourself uh, so like you know which is a very common question tell me about yourself or introduce yourself like that so in like you know you can explain about yourself like uh, career and your roles and responsibilities and all so what you are doing and what are your tech stack and uh, if you are handling the team so you can explain all those things guys so then comes automation experience in your project so you can uh, explain the your automation experience saying that like you know writing the test cases or executing the test cases and uh, like you know uh, what are the things that you do in the especially in the automation uh, framework right so it will be like you know locating the element and writing the test cases by reference to the manual test cases and uh, you will be pushing the code to the github and uh, the your lead will review and you will send for the correction and those kind of things you can uh, start explaining it guys so then like you know what is xpath and write xpath for the given scenario so xpath is basically a xml path uh, language so which is used to uh, identify the locators in the uh, web page so what is the benefit of uh, i mean what is the advantages of export is like uh, so it provides us the flexibility to traverse from like you know uh, top to bottom and the bottom to top so the reverse also we can move and fa forward also we can move so that is one advantage but when it comes to performance uh, it is a little bit uh, slow when compared with the other uh, locators so then like you know writing the uh, locators for export uh, like you know we can have many syntax like uh, we can uh, write the tag name here and uh, inside that uh, uh, what is the attribute for example if it is id and what is the value of this id so this is generic way. and uh, if we want to use any kind of uh, uh, functions like uh, text function or contains functions so you can use like uh, text is equal to what is the value so like this you can use contains method you can use and uh, starts with you can use so all those you can, all those uh, functions you can make use of it and you can write a better uh, xpaths so xpaths are plays a major role in automation testing because when it comes to dynamic uh, web elements and uh, uh, in those scenarios xpath is very useful guys so then uh, like you know write a xpath of two text boxes which does not have any locators to print so basically like you know the condition is like there are two text boxes which does not have any uh, locators so in that case like you know what is the attributes which are present in that particular html so that we should uh, look into it so for that if i want to write it in general in terms of general say for example it is the tag name and uh, i can uh, do one thing like say for example uh, uh, there will be an attribute called a type right so for that type there will be value for text box as text correct so it will locate two elements how can i do a indexing you have to do the indexing right so that it will locate uh, the elements uniquely so here you can provide one so it will locate the first element if you want to locate the second element uh, you, you have to like you know instead of one you have to provide two so that is the only difference so if you write this one i think uh, it would uh, like you know uh, fulfill all the requirements of this particular question so then comes uh, how to uh, select the values from the drop down so using like you know we can create an object of uh, select class so like sl is equal to new select and uh, we can uh, select so we can use uh, this will be expecting the web element uh, you have to pass the elements here So then comes using this uh, object reference so you can uh, like you know if there is a method like you know uh, sl dot uh, select by visible text so there could be some type of issues guys so please adjust that one say for example whatever the value you want to provide you can provide it say for example xyz so uh, this not only by select uh, visible text you can uh, identify or you can select the values from the drop down using the uh, select by uh, value and select by index also you can make use of it so uh, those are all the methods available in the select class so you can deselect also and uh, you can select also so those things you can perform using the select class 
So what are the weights in selenium and explain briefly and write the code for uh, each of them. So one is like the uh, implicit weight and the second one is the explicit uh, weight and uh, q weight. So these are the uh, weight currently like you know available in selenium. So implicit weight uh, is basically like you know at the moment when you write the uh, Driver dot minus dot time of dot implicit weight of duration dot of seconds, then so it will be like you know more kind of a generic weight which will be applicable for all the uh, element uh, so which you are going to trying to access through the driver. So the, that will be generic in nature. So but when it comes to the explicit weight, uh, so it is more specific to the particular web element. So it will wait only for that particular element, whatever the duration that we have given within that time. Uh, if it is able to find the element, it will continue with the execution. If it is not able to find the element, so it will throw the exception. So the fluent weight is like you know a little bit uh, advanced in nature. So say for example, uh, duration dot of seconds is 30 seconds. So there is a feature called polling time. So if I give that as a 5 seconds for every 5 seconds, so within the given interval of uh, 30 seconds time, for every 5 seconds it will go and check if the value element is present or not. If it is present, it will move on. If it is not present, again one more polling time after waiting 5 seconds. Again one more uh, polling time. So if it completes the 30 seconds, 30 by 5 means uh, 6 times. So 6 times it will check. And uh, even after that, it is not able to find, it will uh, throw the exception. So exception handling, write the code for the given scenario. So exception handling is basically like, you know, whenever uh, the uh, some sort of an event which will happen uh, during the execution of the program so which will cause uh, the program I mean uh, which terminates the uh, execution of the program so how do we handle that one so basically like you know by using the try catch flag so we can handle that one so whatever the statement you want to write uh, you can uh, write here say for example int a is equal to 5 by 10 I mean 5 by uh, 0 so if you do this one I think it will throw automatic exception so you can put this kind of a statement inside this uh, try, try black and uh, to catch the exception uh, you have to like you know uh, you have to catch that exception and you have to put it inside this uh, system that out that and tell why uh, that get something like that. so here like you know we can get the message so this will print the message on the console so whatever the exception we got in this particular statement so that will be uh, printed over here so it is not that catch block will always execute if there is an exception then only it will execute otherwise it won't execute so then comes uh, use of throws keyword so basically throws keyword comes into picture only in the case of uh, checked exceptions right so checked exceptions are the exceptions which are uh, checked by the compiler say for example uh, uh, file not found exception or I, uh, IEO exception, IOE exceptions. So these kind of all are like you know uh, checked exceptions which are checked by the compiler. So to handle the checked exceptions we are using the throws declaration uh, in the method. So like uh, it will look like say for example uh, it is the M1 method. So here like you know there will be throws uh, whatever the exception. Throws, uh, say for example, if it is uh, IOE exception, so it will uh, go like that. Uh, yes, yes. So then comes uh, the finally, finally, black will be used along with the uh, try catch black combination. So here, if you go to the our uh, above example, after the catch black, we can use uh, finally. So in this finally method like you know we can do whatever uh, we want to do say for example driver dot close uh, usually like you know we'll be doing this kind of an activities so we can close all the actions if it is uh, like you know uh, according to the uh, try catch block so basically the finally will always get executed even though the catch block is optional so if exception happen then only this catch block will execute but finally blank finally black is not uh, like that so whatever it is at the end of uh, the uh, this particular block, the finally block will execute and uh, it will be uh, most probably it will be used to close the connections and other things say for example uh, during the JDBC if you are establishing the connection to the database so in that database if I want to close the connections and all uh, you can do that when it comes to the selenium aspect so we can close the uh, window and we can close the browser whatever you open so using the finally so 
the difference between final and finally finally uh, is a block which is uh, used uh, in the exception only final is the keyword uh, which is uh, used in java so if it is declared the variable as a final the value we cannot change if it is method as declared as a final so we cannot override it and if the class is declared as a final so we cannot inherit the properties so that is the main uh, difference between final and final so finally will comes into the exception handling final will comes into the immutable things so yeah so then comes uh, the difference between the list and set so the major difference is the list will allow duplicates set will not allow duplicates list will follow the indexing set will not follow indexing so that is the two major di differences and the uh, list will allow the null values set will not allow so that's it so set will allow one null values but not more than one and the difference between abstract class and interface uh, so the abstract class and interface are basically like you know the class which will be uh, declared as an abstract class say for example if you want to do that one uh, assume it's an abstract class okay. uh, say for example abstract uh, data so this is the class inside this class there will be an abstract method and there could be a uh, uh, non-abstract method also abstract uh, wide assume it is a mode so uh, this is abstract method and uh, wide and two can also be possible now so this could be uh, a, a, like, you know, this should be uh, a uh, non-abstract method so because there is no uh, abstract keyword behind this if it is an abstract keyword so this implementation should not be there if there is an abstract so the implementation should not be there so all this uh, implementation unimplemented method should be implemented in the immediate child class so but whereas in the case of interface uh, it should be like uh, interface so data too so what it can have by default all the variables uh, here is like you know static and final and uh, it can have only like you know unimplemented methods like uh, wide m1 so wide m2 so like this it can have so java 1.8 onwards it will allow us to uh, store uh, some uh, default uh, methods also uh, default wide m3 so which can have the implementation but if you want to do something uh, we can do that one so so and also it will allow the static methods also static wide m4 so this this is also possible and this can have the implementation of it okay so but uh, and one more important thing is like uh, these two methods uh, whatever we declared all the methods by default it will be public so and the immediate child class should implement these two methods so otherwise compiler will throw the error so what is a uh, page object model so page object model is a design pattern so which we are using uh, the whoops concept in java and uh, to make our code uh, as a reusable code and maintainable code so we are segregating it as a base classes and test classes and base classes and all and uh, like you know uh, we are making it as a design pattern so which can be uh, uh, you again which can be reusable and uh, the code can be maintainable and reusable kind of stuff so the page factory is basically like you know which is uh, used to initialize the web objects so whenever we need it so it is like uh, we are using the at the rate point by annotation uh, to uh, to identify the uh, web element on the web page so and also there will be a constructor uh, inside that constructor using the page factory dot init elements so driver comma uh, this so we have to use that we have to call that construct so that it will initialize all the web elements whenever we need it so and one more thing is with the page factory it's a lazy implementation so it is like whenever it is needed then only it will initialize the web object otherwise it will not allow so without page factory so we know right so by class so using that by class uh, we can do that one okay so did you develop any framework if you uh, yeah, i mean uh, involved in the framework development uh, you can say yes and you can start explaining you uh, on that if you have not contributed uh, in the framework development you can say like you know uh, i was working only on the uh, like you know automating the test cases and all so based on that uh, you can answer that one so how to take the screenshot so to take the screenshot uh, like you know we have to type cast uh, takes there is a method called take screenshot uh, say for example uh, takes screenshot so 
so here like you know we have to type cast to the driver and uh, using this uh, sc that uh, like you know get screenshot as uh, this will be like you know output uh, output will be like you know dot file type so which we have to store it in the uh, file variable file uh, which is the source for us right so then what is our target so our target will be like in you know, a file destination is equal to new file of uh, that particular uh, the path of that particular file so we have to pass this path okay so here like you know somewhere uh, it will be like you know uh, slash slash uh, screenshots uh, slash slash uh, file dot png the extension should be png so then like you know we have to uh, there is a method called source dot rename to the destination so we have to do this one then only the uh, the source will be saved into the destination so that's all okay real time experience in build tool like apache and maven so it's like uh, using apache maven is a uh, uh, build tool so we can uh, where uh, the pom.xml file will be there so there we will be maintaining all the dependencies and uh, all the build tools like uh, show fire show fire plugin and other stuff like that so that whenever if there are any changes in the software or some uh, jar files which we are using in our project so we don't have to download the uh, jar files and configure the build path so we just have to change the number that may one will internally take care of it and also uh, it is, which is a uh, very helpful uh, when it comes to the execution of the form.xml and all so the version controlling tool uh, git and github so some commands you can explain it so the member access modifier uh, you can explain that so the public protected default and private so public is accessible throughout the project the protected is accessible uh, within the package and subclasses default is accessible within the package and uh, not in the subclasses and private will be accessible only within the classes so that is good so array and array list so what is the difference between array and array list so array is the fixed size array list is there is no fixed size and array is for primitive data types uh, array list is for object data types so that is uh, the difference there how to sort uh, using collection so there is a method called uh, collections that sort and you have to pass that collection so it will sort the collection if it is numbers it will um, uh, sort in the ascending order if it is uh, the string it will uh, sort it in the uh, alphabetical order guys so that's all right uh, if you like my content please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel please uh, like you know if you have any concerns please let me know in the comments down below guys so thank you thank you so very much for watching